All right, today is April 7th. It's Thursday. This is AVID lesson number three. Uh, this is for second hour and fifth hour video production one. Um, we're going to start with AVID Media Composer. This is the program that we're going to use today. If we open this, um, we've got a few things that we talked about yesterday. We talked about four shot split screens. Um, I'm going to erase uh, the effects here. I'm going to show you how to erase an effect. Right now we have applied a picture-in-picture -picture effect to all of these shots right here. Um, to take off an effect, whether it's a dissolve or it's a picture-in-picture -picture effect, there's a little stop sign here that says remove effect. It's shaped like a stop sign. Okay, It's got a little line through it. So we're going to click that. That takes the effect off. We hit it again, takes the effect off. We highlight video track 3 takes the effect off, highlight video track two, remove effect, takes all those things off. So now what we have here is we have four video layers, actually we have five video layers that are stacked on top of each other. So that's how you take off that effect. Um, let me, let's do a quick review on adding a picture in picture effect. If we go up to our project window where all of our super bins are stored, right now our audio graphics bin is open and our video clips bin is open. And those two are right here. Double click audio clips. There's our audio clips. Um, when, we go, when we go up to our project window, we have our, our uh, this is our purple effects tab. So if we click on that, there's a whole bunch of different effects that we can do in here. But for right now, we're going to do blend. We're going to do picture in picture. We're going to drag that right on top of that shot right there. When, it, when you put it on top of the shot, it brings it back to 50% automatically. Right now, uh, artsy shot by August. Um, there's nothing on that, so that's full screen. Once we put that picture in picture effect onto that, it's going to drop it back to 50%. Picture in picture again here on walk from left to right, that's going to drop it back to 50%. And picture in picture, take one broom, that's going to drop it back to 50%. And then we're seeing video track one here. All right, so now uh, just we're going to review what we did from yesterday. When we, uh, when we want to move these shots. I'm going to deselect video two, video three, and video four. All I'm going to do is deal with video track five right now. I'm going to go up to tools, and I'm going to go to effect editor. Um, mostly 95% of the time, anytime you want to affect one of your video shots, it's going to happen inside tools and selecting effect editor. That's where you're, where you're selecting all of your effects for all your shots. Okay. So when we get the effect editor up here, it's, we can do border, we can do foreground, we can do scaling, we can do position, we can do, we can do crop. If, there's a, if we wanted to take this girl off of this shot right here, we could actually crop the left side, and now she's gone. Just a little bit of her shoulders there. So all we have there is just summer. Um, so you can do cropping, you can do um, a whole bunch of different things. Um, for right now, we're going to, when you, when you go into Effect Editor and you're on top of that shot and this track is selected, we can actually physically grab this shot and we can move it wherever we want on the screen. We'll put it down there. Um, let's say we want to move uh, Video Track 4. If we select Video Track 4, when you select the actual shot here, it's going to draw a box around that actual Video Track 4. We'll put that up in the top corner here. Same thing with video track three. If I highlight that, I click on the video shot, it's going to activate that shot. We'll put that up in the corner here. So we have three and then video track two. Here's that last shot. We'll bring that down to the corner. Now what we have here is we have four video tracks that are all playing the video. They're not moving, they're just staying where I put them. You can move them if you, if you decide that you want to move one shot or something, you can do that. All right. Any questions on, on that four shot split screen? You can also have a three shot split screen. Um, you, could just, you could just have three shots where you just have three right here. You could, you could uh, adjust the, the sizing and the scaling with that. If we go back to Tools, go to Effect Editor. Um, this little purple little box here, this is called a keyframe. If I hit Delete, it's going to go away. 
If I activate this uh, video track four, if I click on this, if I click off of it, or if I add another keyframe, this one will go dark. So now the computer is asking for more information for this keyframe. Keyframes are more of a, they're very, very advanced things that you can do, but do it, setting up this, this four shot split screen, it's really, really simple. We've had, um, we've had assignments where student groups have to come up with a four shot split screen shot for five seconds. And so one group did a, a Nike logo down here and then they had three uh, players using a Nike product or a, a Nike football or Nike volleyball or Nike basketball, whatever you wanted to do. So the creativity is up to you, however you want to do it, okay? Um, if we take out one of these shots, we can just lift this, mark it in, mark it out. Right now we have all four of these tracks are selected. If we deselect four, three, two, and one, all right, one is already deselected. If I hit lift here, it gets rid of it, and now we just have uh, we just have three shots. Actually, let's go like this. This is part of the actual background. So if I if I took out video track one, let me do that really quick. Here's three shots. So what you're seeing on the timeline is three video shots. What you're seeing up here is three video shots. Hit Control Z. That video shot's going to come back. Okay, anything, any other questions on that part? Right now this bottom layer, this video track one, it's not set up, it's not doing any kind of effect, there's no effect on that. So we could go, we could put picture in picture on that. It's gonna drop it back to 50%. I'm gonna deselect five right now. We'll activate that one, go to tools, go to effect editor, scaling. Here, I'll turn on my top television. Puts that, it puts that white box around it so that you know which one is active. And now there's your four shots that are moving. Okay. Um, let me show you something else that's kind of cool. Um, we're going to lift out, go to, go to video track four, and mark in, mark out. We're going to lift, which is the red button, and then we're going to go a little bit more in. And we're going to set the mark in, and we're going to select video track three. And now we're going to lift that red arrow, go over a little bit more, mark in. We have our mark out already, video track two, and we're going to lift. So now what we have here is we have these three video shots stopping, well, stop. And then let's have this one stop also. Mark it in, mark it out. Select video track one, we will lift that. If I extracted right here, what would happen to this stuff over here? It would be pulled over this way, right? So if I do that, extract, now this broom sweeping, the, the audio is completely off because I didn't pull anything else with it. So if I hit edit undo, if I hit lift, everything stays intact. If I wanted to lift that audio out, A1, A2, lift, gets rid of the audio. If I wanted to close that gap right here, remember what I said about putting the camera in the, inside the sweatshirt? A student actually did that. They put the camera inside the sweatshirt and they were recording black. Anytime that you cut video and audio out, it's just going to be a black screen. A lot of kids will do that when they, they have, they'll be filming a PSA, a public service announcement, and they show the front of a car and they zoom in really fast to the front of the car What's that simulating if you're zooming really fast into the front of a car? You got hit, right. Well, we don't, we don't show kids getting hit by a car because, well, I'd probably get fired. And so when you, when you cut to black, the audience can assume what? You got hit. The person, the actor got hit or the actress got hit. So um, it, that we call that kind of an assumption cut. Assumption cut would be another term I would want you to know. Um, we use assumption cuts also when, uh, let's say you're filming someone um, coming from their car all the way into the front of the school, and they park in the last row of the parking lot. If you're walking with a camera following that actor or the actress all the way to the front door, 
How boring of a shot would that be? Or do you think it would be an exciting shot? Maybe, maybe you're going to film it in a way that's really, really exciting. Maybe. Okay, so in those cases, you can film the person shutting the car off, turning the key, pulling the key out, opening the door from the inside so you're in, the camera operator is inside the car with the person, filming them open the door, then you take the camera out, film them again getting out of the car. Okay, so you have your sequence of getting out of the car, pulling the keys out, and then shutting the door. Then what if you together with your actor, you, walk, you didn't have the camera recording, you walked all the way to the front of the school, and you had them, you filmed them opening the, the door to the school and going in. Would that make sense to you as a viewer? Because you can assume that what? They got to the school, right? You don't have to show their whole entire journey. We call it an assumption cut. It's called condensing time. Okay? Movie producers do that all the time. You have an hour and a half to do a movie, to produce a movie, and then, then you're done. So producers and editors are always looking for things to cut. You don't want a three hour long movie like Titanic. Okay? They could have cut out about three hours of that and it would have been fine. They could have done that movie in 20 minutes. Honestly. So anyway, assumption cutting. Um, yeah, you guys might do that. All right, so we've got, let me show you this again. This one fades out, 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 out. All right, so this is kind of a cool thing that you can do. We're going to select video track four only. And I'm going to show you the dissolve. Um, with the cursor on top of, of the ending of that right here, we're going to hit dissolve, uh, quick transition, which is also the dissolve. And we're going to select... Now let's do 15 frames and we'll do ending at cut. And I'll show, I'll, I'll explain ending at cut and centered on cut later. So ending at cut, 15 frames. What is 15 frames equal to in time? Half a second. Very good. So I'm going to hit add and render. Okay, you guys see this little, little icon here that's happening? Control Z. So what it's doing here is it's taking the last 15 frames of the shot and it's fading it out. That's a dissolve. Now I'm going to do the same thing on video track 3. If I forget to hit video track 3 right here and I hit dissolve again, it thinks, Avid thinks I want to do something to, add, to uh, track 4, which I don't. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to take off video track 4, turn, off, turn on video track what? 3 right there. And then I'm going to hit this fifth button over. It's called the quick transition. Um, ending at cut. Let me do a let me do a centered on cut one, and you can see the difference between the two. Centered on cut, 15 frames, which is half a second. Video assets, V drive. That's the one that we want. We select add and render. So there's centered on cut, and then we'll do another one. We're going to select video track two. Turn off video track three. Uh, quick transition, and we're going to do uh, starting at cut this time. 15 frames which is a half of a second, add and render. Now I can show you the difference between all three of these before I play this little thing here. All right, so look at uh, video track four right now only. The last 15 frames we're putting a dissolve ending at cut. Where's the cut on video track four? It's right there, right? Ending at cut. So meaning the last 15 frames of this shot ending at cut it means that the dissolve is going to end at the cut. It ends at the cut. The next one we selected was centered on the cut. So this is the cut right here on video track three. Everybody look at video track three. This is the cut. If you're going to center it on the cut, what Avid will do, we selected 15 frames, right? So what it will do is it will take seven and a half frames here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven frames here and seven frames on the back end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is why it's really important to record post roll, is because sometimes part of that post roll becomes part of your dissolve out. Okay? So if you forget to do that, that post roll, sometimes it, the shot doesn't work. Like if we didn't record post roll on the end of this shot, if the camera started getting all bouncy and you put the someone put their face in front of the, the lens or whatever, 
that shot would be ruined and we'd have to we'd have to readjust this shot okay so that's centered on cut it separate it it divides 15 into 2 which is seven and a half okay and it spreads it over the top of that cut the last one that we selected was starting at cut so now on this one the broom shot right here here's the cut we're gonna start the dissolve the fade it fades out a dissolve fades out the 15 frames starts right here. One, two, three, four, watch the broom. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There, it's gone. So that's starting at the cut. And depending on the project that you're doing, that the, the ending at the cut and the centered on the cut and the starting at the cut, sometimes it, it, it matters on which one that you select. If, if you have a name super and you have a logo and you have a graphic and you want them all to end the same way, you would select the same dissolve, the same dissolve ending for each track. Okay? That will make sense once you start adding graphics. But I want you to understand the ending at cut, the centered on cut, and the starting at cut. Okay? So when we play this back, oh, we've got to add a dissolve on this one also. Video track one needs a dissolve, dissolve. We'll do this one. Uh, which one do you want? Ending, starting, or are, are centered? I heard someone say centered. So we'll go centered. There we go. What? OK. So we'll hit play here. Play. Fade, 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 fade. So it, it looks nicer than just a cut. This is your dissolve. Fade out, fade out, fade out, fade out. It's soothing. So if yeah, if so if you wanted to extend that out a little bit, how would we uh, how could we make this shot a little bit longer? Anybody remember that? Trim mode. Trim mode, very good. So trim mode is the second tool over, which is right here. So with video track one selected, we select trim mode, and then this is the cool thing about this, you can just pull this shot over just a little bit more. There, it's longer. And then make sure that you get out of trim mode because if you don't and you're trying to work in here and you've got these two little purple boxes here, it really, you're going to have a lot of problems and you can't really do very much. Okay? You get frustrated. Okay? So then if we hit dissolve here, here let me show you what happens when you have other tracks selected. We hit dissolve. You've got a mess. You've got, now you've got the audio trying to fade out. You've got, what else is trying to fade out? Video track three is going to fade out and then you're going to have video track one fading out. So that's why you need to isolate, take that off, take that off, take three off, take five off, and you're just adding the dissolve onto that one thing, one track that you're dealing with. Okay, centered on cut, half a second, 15 frames. There we go. Now it's gonna look nice. Let me show you another thing, that little top television we talked about. When you hit play and there's nothing playing up here, I'm not sure if I told this to fifth hour or not. If that little TV right here is not clicked on, you won't see any of that. So if I shut that TV off, it's just going to be a black screen. Okay. So um, another thing here, if we just have video track one selected, you will not see any of the other shots because you have to have the top television on here. So all you're seeing is video track one right there. If you want to see two video tracks, turn on video track two. Now you're going to see two. To see three, you're going to turn on the television on track three. There's three shots. Fades out. And then finally track four. There's nothing on track five, so it doesn't matter. There's all four of our shots. Fade out, fade out, fade out, fade out. Okay? So that's dissolve. Any questions on dissolving or quick transition? Okay, now I'll actually go to my list that I was going to talk to you guys about today. I'm going to lift everything else out. I'm going to hit lift on all this. I've got all these tracks selected. Everything is selected, all this blue. I'm going to hit, if I hit extract, it's going to bring everything close together and I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have any space. Let me show you. I can't edit like this. Where there's nothing there, I, I need space. So I'm going to go edit, undo, extract. I'm going to lift it because I want that, I want that empty space. How do you get more empty space? Anybody remember? 
Yep, you insert clips and then you lift them out. Very good. Um, Mr. Mathis calls them slugs. I call them dummy clips. This is a dummy clip. There's a clapboard. I know I'm not going to use that. Mark in, mark out. I want all this. I want more space here. If I hit splice in, it's going to push everything over like that. And then I know I don't want that, so I'm going to lift it out. And now I've created all that time right there that I have time to edit with. Okay. You can also delete this time. Let's say I was like, well, that's too much. I don't want that much. You can go mark in. You can go mark out. Remember, these two are coinciding with one another. Mark out, mark out, mark in. If you hit, if you hit lift, nothing's going to happen, of course. But if you hit extract, it deletes that time. You can delete empty time. That's empty time, mark in, mark out. It's highlighted in blue. Delete empty time, extract. Extracting deletes empty time. All right. Questions? Any anything yet? Everybody with me? Fifth hour, are you with me? Fifth hour is actually watching this in the cafeteria today. So, all right. So now we're going to go to Ken Burns. But first, before we do that, we're going to go grab an image off of Google Images. We are recording still. Actually, it's it's right here. All right. So we went into Google. Second hour wanted a, a turtle eating a strawberry. We had a hockey player in the room. We had, what else did we have for options? A NASCAR. A NASCAR, but I don't know. I, 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 li I like turtles because when, we, when I bring our kids to the doctor, there's this tank and there's all these turtles in there. Southdale Peds? Yeah, I know, awesome. Anybody else on Southdale Peds? It's awesome. I want one of those little turtles. They're awesome. I get them in my backyard. Do you really? Oh, well, that's awesome. Cool. All right, so um, we, got a, we have a turtle here. Make sure that if you're ever going to had, – we've had students come in and do, like, projects for Mr. Holmes. They've done them for Miss, uh, Miss Carlson for civics or – yeah, civics, right? Social studies, they've done, like, projects on 9-11 and different things like that. So students have come in. They've gone to Google Images. They've, they've gotten all these pictures. They've grabbed one of our microphones. Mr. Touch, can I record some sound? I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a PowerPoint slideshow and put it on video and do some Ken Burns effects and things like that. And so you're grabbing these these quality images off of Google. Make sure you go to large images when you're when you go to uh, search for these. Make sure that you're going to images and then you go to large size. Go to large size and then try to get the ones without um, watermarks. Okay. So hopefully we're still recording with all this technology that's going on behind the scenes. We're going to actually view the image, and then we're going to right-click on this, and we're going to save it. Okay, you have to save the image. Hungry turtle. Hungry turtle wallpapers. We'll hit save. It downloaded. That's good. And I don't need that. We are still recording. We're going to go back into Avid. Hungry Turtle is right here on my desktop. Um, if you ever want to make a folder, you can right click, uh, go new folder. My project for Mr. Holmes, my project for AP Bio, whatever you guys are doing, if you, you guys can, you guys are able to use our stuff for that kind of stuff. So we've got our pro we have our picture here. I'm going to show you how to import that into Avid. So we're going to go back to Avid. And then, remember when we made a bin here for graphic clips? We're going to double click that. Um, we've got a few graphics in there. We're going to actually right click in our graphics bin. We're going to go to import, just like we do for video. We're going to go to Hungry Turtle, which is right there. We're going to click on that. It's a JPEG. We're going to hit open. And it brings it in. If we double click that little film strip, it brings it in. Very, very cool. It's about 30 seconds long. So now let's bring this in. We can bring it in on video track one. This little video handle right here, this is the track that it's going to go on. If we wanted to have it go on video track five, we would simply click down, point it to video track five, and that turtle will go to video track five. Mark it in and mark it out. Overwrite. There it's on video track five. If we want it on video track one, click, drag down to one, overwrite. There it is on one. Okay, so you can tell it where you want it to go. All right. 
So now for the Ken Burns effect that we're going to show you how to do. Right now, this, this picture is just sitting there. It's not doing anything. So if you wanted to make it look like you went out with a video camera, you filmed this turtle eating. Of course, the turtle isn't going to move, but you can, you can add motion to this. You can have the camera zooming in, or you can have the camera zooming out. So let me show you how to do this. Um, kind of the same way that we did the, the four-shot split screen, if we go up to our project window, we go up to our purple box here, we go to blend, and then picture in picture. It's the same one that we used when we did the four shot split screen. We're going to click and we're going to drag picture in picture. We're going to drag that little box right on top of Hungry Turtle wallpapers. It automatically drops it back to 50%, which is what it does all the time. And then what do you think that we're going to go to next? 95% of the time, what do we do? Tools. Then what? Effect editor, very good. All right, once you're in the effect editor, it puts that little box around it. And then it, what Avid does is it isolates that shot. See how it's highlighted there? It's like highlighted blue. And what you can do is you can go up here and you can scrub through this little part and you're just, going, you're just affecting this shot down here. Nothing else on the, on the timeline is up here right now because Avid knows that you're going to do something with this shot. So. We're going to add some keyframes. This is what a keyframe does. I'm going to click this little purple uh, triangle. It's pointing up. It's called Add Keyframe. It just added that keyframe. And then I'm also going to go over here to Scaling. I'm going to activate this first little dot. I'm going to type in 100. And I'm going to hit Enter. It brings it up to full screen. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very end of that shot and I'm going to add another keyframe because we're going to have some motion on this. For this one, I'm going to put in uh, 123, 133. So it's now the image is closer. I also can move this right there so we keep the turtle's head in there. So now here's our shot. So now we've got motion on that shot. So any time that you ever watch a documentary on whatever it is, if it's on, uh, I helped my daughter with the Louisiana Purchase last night. We watched these documentary things on Lewis and Clark and all these things, and they've got all these maps and rivers and Missouri River. I learned a lot last night about Lewis and Clark, ton. And any time that we watched a video on that, any time you, any time a, a map or a picture zooms in like that, an editor had to make that happen. Whether it was a keyframe or it was, a, if it was a zoom on the camera, but most of the time those types of videos are done with this. You're using keyframes to zoom in. We can also do a zoom out. So let me show you how to do a zoom out. We're going to use this one. I'm going to activate video track 5. We're going to go up here to picture in picture. We're going to drag this on top of there. Activate 5. I'm going to take off 1, 2, 3, and 4. It drops it back to 50%. We're going to go to, we're going to, go to Tools, and then we're going to go to Effect Editor. Very good. 95% of the time. It activates that track. Get little pinpoints here. Uh, you have your little window up here where all you're doing is just affecting that shot. And this time, we're going to do it backwards. We're going to go to... We're still going to add that keyframe right there, but we're going to make the value, the scaling, we're going to make that 133 because that's what we started with or we ended with. And then we're going to move that to the right spot, which is right about there. And then we're going to go over to this side. We're going to add another keyframe, and then we're going to push 100. And you'll notice that when I did move it, now it's a little bit off kilter, so we can pull this back down. Make sure it's filling the screen. That looks good. So now it's going to start large and it's going to zoom out. This is called the Ken Burns effect. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Ken Burns has done a lot of documentaries on war, world wars, baseball, um, 
different things. So if you ever get a chance to look him up, he does a lot of uh, documentary stuff like this, um, maps and different things. All right, so Ken Burns. Any questions on that Ken Burns effect? Uh, let me show you another thing here too. This is kind of cool. We can do a, here, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to see how I, I'm, uh, I'm on this first one, on this turtle. If I hit mark in, I'm going to select all my video tracks here because I'm going to do an extract. And I push mark out. Everybody see that little blue box that's selecting here? I'm selecting the, la the last part of this one and the first part of this one. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift, I'm going to extract, I'm sorry, I'm going to extract this. I'm going to bring these together. And I'm going to put these on the same track, right, like that. So here's what's happening behind the scenes. This one is zooming out, and this one is zooming in. I should be using two different images. Um, you know what? Let's do that really quick. Yeah, actually, I can show you this really quick. This would be good. Um, we'll bring in this basketball shot. I'll show you how to copy a, an effect. We'll put it on video track one for now. We'll go to overwrite. And so everybody see video track five here? Yep. OK, so watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to tools. I'm going to go to effect editor. And then here's the really cool thing. Let's say you have a, a really complicated move that you edited in effect editor and you don't want to have to go through the problem of recreating it every single time. Let's say you want to do it every like third picture or something like that. You did something really neat. So what you can do is you can put your cursor right on top of that effect. Make sure that your video track is selected over here. Go back to tools, go to effect editor. And they, you guys see this little icon right here? It says picture in picture. What you can do is you can click and you can drag this all the way down to this shot. And what that will do is it will put that same effect onto that shot. So I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't do anything with that basketball picture, but yet that effect is already on there. Okay. Um, I'm going to erase this hungry turtle wallpaper. I'm going to mark the clip. I have video track five selected. I'm going to mark the clip. It puts the mark in, it puts the mark out, and I can either hit extract or I can hit lift. Right now I'm going to hit lift because I don't want anything else pulled over. I'm going to hit lift, and then for right here, I'm going to pull, pull this up right there. So now what I've got, I've my, got my turtle, I've got my basketball. So now let's do something really cool. How do I, what are the shortcuts to get rid of this mark in and this mark out because it's driving me crazy? D and the F key because you don't want Ds or Fs in school. D, F, it gets rid of it. Right here where that edit is happening, this is an edit. Boom, boom, that's an edit. Okay, so we're going to put a dissolve on this edit. We're going to deselect video track one because there's nothing on video track one and I don't want to confuse Avid. The only thing that we're dealing with right now is video track five where this video is. I'm going to hit the fifth tool over from the left. One, two, three, four, five. This is called quick transition. It's the same thing that we did to make those four images fade out. So quick transition. I'm going to move this up so you can see what's happening. It highlights that little that edit right there. And it's telling me, OK, I'm ready to do what you want me to do here with this transition. What do you want me to do? How long do you want me to make it? And duration, that's how long it is. It's asking me, do you want to do centered on cut? Do you want to do ending at cut? Do you want to do starting at cut? Right now, we're going to do centered on cut. Uh, dissolve, there's also film dissolve. There's film fade. There's fade to color. There's fade from color, there's dip to color, and there's S3D depth transition. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to do just dissolve. I'm going to select 30, which is equal to one second. 30 frames, add and render. You'll see it happening right there. And then what happens here, when it, since I chose 30 frames, it divides 30 by 2. What's 30 divided by 2? 15. 15. All right, so if I zoom in, I hit the scale bar, zoom in right here. Half of, half of 30 is 15, so what it did was it divided 15 here and 15 here to make that transition happen. So you've got a Ken Burns effect happening here, Ken Burns effect happening here, and you've got this really lovely 
dissolve joining the two together to make it seamless. Watch. Oh, yeah. I know. I think it demands an instant replay. So we'll go here. We'll hit the space bar and hit play. Very nice turtle zooming out. And it fades in to the basketball. OK? Yeah, thank you. So that's, that's a dissolve. And uh, I mean, a dissolve, a passing of time, that's what kind of, uh, that's, that's what insinuates a dissolve when you use that. Um, when you take, for instance, the, the car example with the assumption cutting, when we had the person getting out of the car and we had 15 different angles of getting out of the car and showing the keys coming out and filming it from the outside and the inside and the person gets out of the, out of the car and they start walking towards the school. If you're doing a dissolve in between each one of those shots where you're taking the keys out, you're shutting the door, you're walking, you're doing a dissolve, a dissolve, a dissolve, a dissolve, a dissolve. It's telling your viewer that in between all those shots, you went to McDonald's, you got an ice cream cone, you went to Donnelly's farm, you talked to the cows. In between all those shots, when you put a dissolve there, you're telling your audience, this took longer than what it really did. You're telling them that eh, five minutes later we got this shot, five minutes later we got this shot, ten minutes later we got this shot. That's what a dissolve tells your audience. It's, it tells passing of time. Okay? When you do a straight cut, when you're cutting from car keys inside the car door, opening the car door, the car door shuts, the person walking to the school, the person wa opening the door, going into the school, when you're cutting and there's no dissolve, that's real time. And you're doing all those as separate shots with your videographer and your actor or your actress. When you put a dissolve in between all those, you're telling your audience this took this took all day to get from the car all the way to the school. So keep that in mind when you start editing your projects. Be really, really careful about how you use the dissolve. Okay. Um, when I do when I do highlight films for brides, I'll film a whole entire day. I'll have six hours of solid film to go through. I I take their favorite song as a. a as a couple, I'll take their favorite song and I'll, I'll take all of their shots where they're happy and they're walking down the aisle and they kiss each other and the at wedding and they, they walk into the reception. I use dissolves all through that whole entire thing because it looks better. Okay? I don't have to follow a time format with that because it's just the highlights of their wedding day. They can watch their whole wedding day in four minutes to their favorite song. So I use a, I use a dissolve because it's it's more pleasing on the eye rather than a hard cut. Okay, so pick pick a time when you can use a dissolve and you'll be good. Uh, sports highlight films. If you're doing basketball highlight films or football, we hardly ever use a dissolve. Hardly ever, unless you're like transitioning to like uh, I don't know, like an artsy fartsy shot where the camera's on the turf. There's a football helmet and then there's a football, like kind of like strategically placed and it, 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 the camera's maybe kind of moving and it's kind of an artsy shot, I would do a dissolve into that because it's just kind of a transition. It's just a, it's like, a, hey, seniors, remember the last football game that you played? Oh, here's something to make you, make you ponder that last football game on Tiger Field. And then you show their football helmet and you show a football. It's a dramatic shot. I would use a dissolve on that. But when you're going hard hit, hard hit, hard hit, Throw to the throw to the end zone touchdown. You're using hard cuts with fast music, typically typically on the beats. Okay, makes sense. So you really have to be careful how you use that cross dissolve. This this turtle eating the strawberry to the basketball. I mean, this is dramatic. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, Mr. Matthews, you want to add anything to that? Okay, um, any questions on Ken Burns adding the effect dissolve? Hands up, anything. 
anything you want me to do again. Front row, you good? Okay, we're gonna add in a music track. I'm gonna bring in something, that I'm gonna give you guys a little preview of tomorrow. Um, Fifth Hour is also gonna hear it because they're watching this. Hi, Fifth Hour, what's up? Uh, we'll go to bins, we're gonna go to audio clips. They can hear what I'm saying because they're watching this, this uh, streamcast. All right, so we're gonna right click in my audio clips right here. I'm gonna go to import. I'm gonna bring in the theme song for tomorrow's show. Uh, FA music for FHS morning show. We'll go to uh, credits. We'll just use credit credits music. We'll hit open. Okay, so sometimes you'll get this. Sometimes you'll use one of our audio recorders for cutting some audio. What does cutting some audio mean? What does cutting some audio mean? What? No, not take it out. What is cutting audio? Fifth hour, what does cutting audio mean? What is cutting? Go cut some audio. What does that mean? You guys remember this, don't you? What? Someone said it. Record, record it. It means to go into a sound room and go record it. Go cut some audio. All right? Very good. So when you go cut some audio with our little recorders and you put your file in here, you're going to get this little box. This is good that this came up because now you can now you can learn. If you want to write this down and you want to take a mental snapshot, you're going to hit select and you're going to select 29.97 non drop frame NDF. 29.97 non drop frame. Try answering that question 36 times in one hour. Uh, Mr. Tauchi, which one do we select here? 29.97 NDF. Hey, uh, Mr. Tauchi, which one do we use on this? 36 times in one hour. It gets a little old. So make a mental note. Take a picture. I don't care what you do, but just don't ask me again. Nah, I'm just kidding. You can ask me. I just <laughs> Fifth hour, you can't ask me. Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, 2997 non-drop frame. That's what we want to select. And if I was bringing in like six or seven of these, I can hit OK to all. But since I'm just bringing in one, I'll hit OK. It brings it in as a wave file. Watch the paint dry. All right, so then it brings it into audio clips right here. Credit Music FHS Morning Show. If I double click that, I want to double click the sound icon and not the words here. Look out any window. If I click on look, nothing's going to load. If I do load, if I double click on this little sound wave, it will load. Okay, so make sure that you're choosing the right thing. We'll hit play on this. <laughs> All right, so that's just a music bed that we're going to use. It gets it gets uh, a little bit more exciting later later on. Um, We'll go to the very beginning. The beginning of that clip is the IL, remember. We're going to push mark in. Actually, you know what? Let's go further in. We'll go right there. Mark in. And then we'll show you a dissolve on the audio. Um, if I wanted to just keep the audio just as far as this little shot right here, we can push mark in. We go to the end and select mark out mark out. And then which audio track do I want it on? A1 and A2? Sure. So we're going to select A1 and A2. If I keep video 5 selected here, it's going to wipe out that video. So if I hit overwrite, now my video is gone and now I'm sad. Control Z undoes that or you can go to edit undo. We have to take out video track 5 and then you can do your overwrite. So here is our hungry turtle with our basketball shot. Okay, there's our music. Um, EQing the music, we can also EQ the music. Everybody remember how to EQ the music to bring the audio down. Go to tools, very good. Audio mixer, very good. Um, you guys remember these two buttons here? What is this? What are these two buttons for? Sound 
the group button, right. It adjusts it at the same time, exactly. So if I click these together and I bring this down just a tiny bit, negative 3.6. It's just touching the yellow. I'm going to bring it down just like 3 point or 4, negative 4. Perfect. Everybody lock this into your long-term memory. This is what your audio should look like where it should be reaching. Should just be touching the yellow. Not in the yellow, just touching it. So sometimes it's sometimes it's green, sometimes it's yellow. All right? So make sure that you have it like that. All right, so we've got our audio. We want the audio to fade in. All right? So fifth tool over, one, two, three, four, five. So this is quick transition. Not only does it work for video, it also works for audio. So with those two audio uh, tracks selected, A1 and A2, when we push quick transition, it highlights A1 and A2. You can kind of see this bright uh, baby blue little spot right here. It's telling you, all right, I'm going to put something there. What do you want me to put there? Avid saying that. You, can't, you just can't hear Avid saying that, but it's saying that. Now you can decide, do you want it centered on cut, do you want it ending at cut, or do you want it starting at cut? I would like to have it ending at cut, and here's why. I want the music to start before the graphic comes in, okay? So I'm going to select ending at cut, but like Tauchi, the, the, the cut is happening at the beginning. Why are you selecting ending? So let me show you why. We'll do a 30, 30 frame dissolve. So here's what happens when you select ending at cut. It puts, it puts the dissolve, you guys can kind of see this right here. It puts the dissolve before the video even starts. So the, the, this is a, kind of the reason why I went halfway into the, the song already, because I know that there's music back here. There's music right here, but it's kind of like someone is taking a soundboard and they're like, they're fading it in. So if you listen to this, So that, that audio is fading in. Let me turn this up again. Okay, so you can see that dissolve that's happening right there. And that's that's ending at cut. And here's the cut, it's ending at the cut. All right. We can do the same thing on the video. Select video track five, take off A1, A2, add the dissolve. Okay, I can either I can uh, have the video come in later or I can have it come in a little bit earlier up to me. I'll do centered on cut. Add and render. Uh, let me show you one other thing here too. Uh, don't let someone in your group make this mistake. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit edit undo. Let's say that you have the music coming in then someone in your group goes oh let's Let's make sure that we bring the video back. Let's make sure the video happens right when the audio happens. So someone in your group may do this. You're going to grab your video like this, and you're going to pull it over. And what you just did was you just screwed up your nice dissolve in between the, this shot. So what's going to happen here is this is going to cut out, cut, and then it's going to fade in. They're like, what? I thought I had a nice dissolve in between. So be careful that when you start pulling things over on the timeline, make sure that you know what you're doing. If things are connected via a dissolve, that you're not screwing that shot up. So I can fix that. I can go up to edit, undo, lift, overwrite, and that's, that's still back. That dissolve is back, okay? So let's say you did want to bring everything over. How would you do that? Well, in other programs, it's a lot easier, but in, in Avid, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to copy it. I'll give you a, an advanced lesson here. Video track five, we mark it in. We mark this out. We highlight it. We hit, what is the, the word copy? What letter does the word copy start with? So on C, on the keyboard, you hit the C key. I just hit it. And then you go over to Tools. Go to Clipboard Monitor. And when you hit that C key, what happened was all that video that you just highlighted was just copied to this Clipboard Monitor, the whole thing. There's that dissolve, okay? 
So this is kind of an advanced move, but if you want to learn how to do it, you can. Because you'll most likely you're going to use the clipboard about 50 times a day once you start <coughs> editing. Once you know how to edit, you'll use clipboard monitor probably 50 times a day. All right. All right. So we'll bring this back where the music starts. Oh, gotta have my volume up. Right there. So let's say you want your video to start there. We'd push mark in and we would take out our out point right now. How do I take my out point out? If you fail a class, what letter is that? F. F. So F takes that out. And then we take this shot right here and we can hit overwrite. Now that shot's coming in. Here's our dissolve. It starts with the music. We can add a dissolve onto the video. Dissolve, centered on cut, 30, add and render. There we go. And now at the very, I did an overwrite. I didn't push anything over. I didn't, I didn't hit splice in. So when I, when I push that, there's still this little piece of video right here. How do I take this little piece out? This piece right here. I don't, I don't need this. How do I get rid of this? What do I got to do to lift that out? Uh, mark in, mark out. Mark in, mark out around it. So mark in. Here's another thing. Students think that you have to go right on top of the clip right here. You have to find the end of it to push the mark in. You don't. You can go into the. You can go into this empty area and just lift it. Okay. So make sure that you remember that because students spend a lot of time trying to get right on that point. You can just you can go right into the area right here. Yeah, lift, right. Um, fading the music out. We can have it fade out when the basketball gets done. Um, mark in, mark out. Highlight audio one and two. We'll hit lift, which is the red arrow. Lift. Now you can you can do you can do uh, video and the audio dissolve at the same time with video track five highlighted, audio one and audio audio two. Quick transition, this one's highlighted baby blue, this one's baby blue, this one's baby blue. Nothing else is highlighted on the tracks. We'll do ending at cut. We'll do 15 frames. Make sure also that your numlock is on, on your keyboard. If numlock is not on, you won't be able to, to punch in any numbers here. There's 373 frames. I don't want that. I want 15. Add and render. Fades it out. Video fades out, the audio fades out. Okay. Add edit. When that when that dissolve happens right there, I want the music to fade down. So I'm going to make sure that only A1 and A2 are selected right here. I'm going to take off V5. And I'm going to go up to this little railroad tie. It says add edit. I'm going to click that with A1 and A2 selected, this Add Edit tool. You're going to notice that there's two little marks, two little white marks right here that got added. It's telling you that you, you added an edit there. So now what you can do is you can go into, let me close the clipboard monitor. I can set a uh, volume for this one, which is set at negative 4. And I'll bring this one down to negative 9.4. They aren't together. No, they are. So now what happens is it goes from negative 4 to negative 9.4. Let's bring it down just a little bit more. Negative 14. So that little drop in sound, we can, we can kind of fix that. We can mask it by adding a quick transition. We'll do a centered uncut. We'll do uh, 20 frames. So now it's going to go from negative 4 to negative 14. And it's going to be like someone is running a soundboard and they're turning it down. So now that gives the editor, uh, you can have a chance to like put in audio. When that audio comes down, we can bring in Kelsey's voiceover. She's talking about Miss Van Bellinger. Mrs. Van Bellinger. Mark in. Take 
Three. Teaching in a brand new high school is like joining a new world for Mrs. Van Bellinger. Mark in, mark out. Ah, oh, all right. Have a good day, everybody. See you tomorrow. Uh, I'm, for fifth hour, I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to add in Kelsey's voiceover right here. When that music fades out, we're going to add in this voiceover on video track three and four. We're going to push down A2 down to A4. A A1 is going to go down to A3. And I am going to overwrite this audio from Kelsey. I'm going to push that in. i got to push in a mark in right about here. That music is going to fade out. Fades out. And then the voiceover from Kelsey right here is going to come in on A3 and A4. So if I hit overwrite, it brings in the audio. So here's what it sounds like. Teaching in a brand new high school is... And of course, Kelsey's vo uh, voiceover is a little bit too loud. So we're going to bring that audio down. So we'll bring this over. Bring Kelsey. We're going to group... Kelsey's audio together. We're going to deselect A1 and A2, group together three and four. We're going to bring Kelsey's audio down. Probably negative 17. Let's try that once. Teaching in a brand new high school is a little bit more down. It's like joining a new world. I'm also going to bring the music down just a little bit more, also. Take off the group, bring this down a little bit. Teaching in a brand new high school is like joining a new You just want to make sure that you're watching the levels here that you're not over modulating into the red. High school is like joining a new world for Mrs. Randolph. All right, that's it, fifth hour. Thank you.